G'day, Lockie here. I've been asked a lot recently around uh, configuring Cube DNS to have different upstreams or different name server configurations. So there was a blog uh, several months ago, uh, April 4th, as you can see here in 2017, about how you can ma manipulate Cube DNS to set either different uh, stub domains or different upstream DNS servers. Now, you, know, you may ask, why do you want to do this? Now, by default, um, Cube DNS will inherit uh, whatever is configured on Etsy Resolve, if you're running on a Linux machine, um, as its upstream. Um, and you may want, that may be okay for you, it may not. You may want some internal infrastructure that you need access to, or you may want to be able to manipulate using stub domains. So you may have um, a domain called uh, locky.test. I'm going to show you that um, in a demo in a second. And you may want to stay inside Kubernetes service discovery, but if you see anything uh, from a lookup from within this zone, please shoot it over to that um, upstream to serve that record. So um, there are a bunch of things you can do. You can follow along here. I'm going to show a couple of demos and some interesting things we can do. Um, so hopefully it'll be nice and quick. So before I get started here, let's take a look at what I'm working with. So I've got a 175, 176 cluster, and I believe this change has been around since the 1.6 uh, release. Now the only thing that you actually need upstream is if we take a look at the pods in the cube system namespace, um, obviously you can see that I have two cube DNS pods here, um, each with three three. So um, cube DNS actually has three pods. There's a DNS mask, which is exposing TCP and UDP port 53. There's uh, cube DNS or sky DNS, which is actually talking to the API, looking at services and handing back A records via way of Q, uh, that DNS mask container inside the pod. And there's also a health Z pod, which is doing um, an NS lookup for kubernetes.service.default.cluster.local. Uh, Kubernetes um, so that's what comprises the DNS pod, and we've got two of them, obviously, for service availability here. Uh, you do, indeed, for the DNS mask, so if we go and do uh, describe cube system. So when you take a look uh, at the containers that are running here, here's the health Z DNS mask. Um, and you need the DNS mask nanny container here. The nanny container actually watches uh, for config maps and changes the DNS mask configuration based on that. Um, so you can see here that I have a config dir, and this is where we're going to insert a config map and read that in. So uh, basically we have this mount point which is coming from a config map. So let's just pop over, and before I do anything, let me show you my test bed. So um, on Azure here, I've created levo.test. Obviously, this does not exist, but let's go and prove that. And I've put a demo record in there. OK, so uh, let's go ahead and grab kubectl. Using kubectl run, let's run up a busy box. I'll do dash IT, and I want the image name of BusyBox. So this is just, if I can type it, BusyBox. OK. So I must actually kubectl get pods. Oh, I actually have one here. kubectl exec minus IT. OK. And I want to go in it. Okay, so I'm inside BusyBox, so now I'm using Cube DNS. I can take a look at that. And I lost my lights. Lights camera option, so you get to come on a little journey with me to get the lights back. They're on a sensor. <laughs> Hopefully, nobody got motion sick. Um, okay, so 100010 Kubernetes service. Okay, so we can look up uh, NS lookup Kubernetes, right? 10.0.0.10, 10.0.0.1. OK, let's look up this test record, uh, Kubernetes demo.levo.test. That is not on the public internet. OK, great. We're OK now. I've done that test. I've proved that that is not publicly accessible with the upstream that I have now. Pop over here to my IDE. So uh, we have a couple of things we can set. So here's a config map. It's looking for this name in this namespace. And I've created a stub domain, levo.test. 
um, to go to this, which is one of the upstream name servers within that zone I created under Azure. We can also set upstream, so hard upstream name servers if we want to override what's being set in Etsy Resolve um, on the host. Okay, so we're good here. So what I'm going to do is do a cube cuddle create dash F and I'm going to add that config map. So I've got that. Now I don't believe there's any uh, provision to actually read that the config map has changed. There's no watch so it doesn't get hopped. So I need to go and do a cube cuddle delete here of the pods delete uh, dash F. Actually I can do a delete pod dash L equals cube DNS because I believe they're labeled that way. And if I do it in the right namespace, I might have more success. <laughs> okay, everybody's done that before. Okay, so I've nuked the two pods there, um, the two current running. Let's get the new ones, get pods dash n cube system. Obviously, by doing that, I just took DNS out. So don't try this on a running production system um, unless you're confident with how your DNS is set up. Okay, so let's go take a look at what's happened here. Describe on this pod um, cube system. Actually, I don't want to do a describe really. I want to just take a look at the logs. And I want to grab cube DNS, which is one of the containers inside that pod. Okay, great. So what I wanted to see here is this, these two messages. So I've set a stub domain of levo.test with an upstream of that, and I've set the upstream. So uh, cube DNS has read in this change from the config map. And let me just have a look at DNS mask as well. Okay. So let's make sure we've got this. Okay, so you can see here the dash dash server, levo.test has got that upstream and then this upstream. So I'm confident now that this change should be in effect. Let's go back and run exec against our busy box again, which should be running NS lookup. Kate's demo dot levo dot test. Okay, so now you see I actually do get a record back, which is one dot one dot one dot one, and that is indeed being served out of here. So I've completely shown the flow uh, through modifying config map, restarting DNS, and proved that for that stub domain levo dot test, it is indeed going to that um, Azure zone file now which is not published on the internet. It was just for test purposes. So hopefully this video was uh, beneficial. I know a lot of people uh, would like to be able to do this. I've been asked a few times myself. Uh, so I wanted just to drop a quick video on how this all hangs together. So I um, hope you found it useful. If you have any feedback, feel free to leave comments. Otherwise, cheers.